Have you ever had somebody rebel against you? You know, you're the leader, you're in charge, right? And then all of a sudden, they just want to take charge. And you're like, what happened? How, how did you ever think that you were in charge? These were guys in the book of number 16 who got really frustrated with Moses because they thought, and got was led by a guy named Korah, right? And he has this team of guys, you know, Byram and Eliab. All of them are like really frustrated with this Moses guy. And they want to take charge and take over. What they, but the problem is they were not supposed to. So they come to Moses with 200, let me see, 250 guys, right? And they all stand there and say, who do you think you are? You're not the only one that's holy. And they give him a hard time. Well, in number 16, 6, watch how Moses responds to rebellious people under his leadership. People he appointed, people he hired. <laughs> watch this. You, Korah, he names him. That's the first thing I want you to notice. Number 16 and 6, he says his name. He identifies the challenge. You, Korah, and all you, your followers, all 250 of you, are to do this. Take the census, uh, and tomorrow put burning coals and incense in them before the Lord. The man the Lord chooses will be the one who is holy. You Levites have gone too far. Notice that. You've gone too far. Too far. Verse 8, Moses said to Korah, Now listen, you Levites, isn't it enough for you that the God of Israel has separated you from the rest of the Israelite community and brought you near himself to do the work at the Lord's tabernacle? Can we stop for a second? Think about this for a second. He says, guys, listen, God gave you leadership. He gave you the tabernacle. You know, All the tithe, by the way, was used to support them. I mean, this is a pretty good deal. You know, the, the people would bring 10% of all their cattle, money, whatever, anything, they, mainly their, their crop, and they would give that as tithe to the temple. And that's what the, that's what the Levites lived off of. He says, guys, God brought you here, gave you this work to do, and then gave you this inheritance. Verse 10, oh boy. He said, he has brought you and all your fellow Levites near himself, but now you're trying to get the priesthood too. It is against the Lord that you and all your followers have banded together. Who is Aaron that you should grumble against him? Guys, this is too far. Let me ask you something. Are you going too far? Are you, you know, okay, you don't like what they're doing on your job, right? You don't like what they're doing in your community, but are you going too far? Are you cussing too much? Are you too loud? Are you acting out? Or what are you doing? Okay, your point may be good. You may have a concern, or at least to you it's good, but it's how you express it. But these guys are flat wrong. These guys have gotten all out. That's why he said, Levi, you've gone too far. There is, there is a too far. Remember this in life. There is a too far. When you're mad about something on your job, frustrated about something, there is a too far. Remember that. And watch how Moses deals with it. He confronts it. And let me tell you something. When people go too far, you have to say something. You can't let it keep going. Because if you let it keep going, it's going to be too much too long and cause too much damage. And so maybe you should think about it. Maybe you should learn. I don't like confronting people. I don't like saying anything. I hate pressure. Well, you're under pressure anyway. You're already fighting. You're already in trouble. Why not stop for a moment and say, okay, maybe this is too far. Maybe you're too angry. Maybe you've forgotten that you asked to work there. Maybe you forgot you volunteered the work of the church. Nobody said they were perfect. The pastor's not perfect. The people aren't perfect. So stop. Don't go that far. Sometimes you can say something, but you don't have to say it like that. But they'd gone too far and wouldn't turn around. Is that you? Maybe huh? you don't turn around. You just you're going to do it because you're going to do it because you don't take it. So now here we go. Something can happen and it happened to them. I don't want it to happen to you. They lost everything, and so can you. Let me pray for you. Father, help us today to calm down and rethink our attitude. We may have an opinion, but we can be sincerely wrong sometimes. So help us to see that in Jesus' name. Amen. My name is Pastor Ricky Temple. I hope I helped you today and Sharpen. Listen, Overcome by Faith Ministry has an app that you want to get. This is a wonderful church I pastor, and we've got this great app. And on the app are the devotionals, sermons, all kind of great stuff you can send and link to your friends and keep up with all the wonderful things that we're doing. And it's just a good thing for you to have on your phone. So download it, get it, and I got to go. Stay sharp, and please, go be nice before it's too late.
see you next time. Bye-bye.